Hello everyone. On today's episode of Tinkering with Terrius, we're going to take a look at the DSO138 and we're going to put it through a couple tests here with the little component tester and some Arduino Unos. Before that, I just wanted to say thank you to all my subscribers and viewers. I believe we're up to 33 subscribers now, so that's pretty awesome there. Total, my videos are at about 4,500 views, which is much higher than I ever expected. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to you guys, and I hope you keep watching. So in the previous few episodes here, we put all of the components on the board. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a real signal generator or frequency generator. So all I'll have to test this oscilloscope is these Arduino Unos, which I've loaded up some basic programs to blink an LED. We should be able to see the frequency on there and the component tester. So I'm also going to be using my multimeter here that has frequency capabilities on it. We can use that with the digital oscilloscope to try and read the component testers frequencies. So here we have the specifications. So analog bandwidth 0 to 200,000 Hertz. It should work perfectly fine for most of the applications I'll be using it for, which is basically just probing the logic of the Arduino, just to be able to visualize what the Arduino is actually doing. Now, by default, the horizontal position is the center, which means it takes quite a while for the actual signal to come into view. So I just moved it over to the right. It, for some reason, moves right to left. It's a little bit different. Okay, so we have the Arduino set up here. It's powered on. The little light is blinking. We're gonna connect the oscilloscope and you can see the signal is doing something. See the LED is still blinking and then occasionally this is jumping up and since this is one volt per division it's jumping up by, let's see, get a hold on it. There we go. So if this is zero volts theoretically it's jumping up by one, two, and a half. It's jumping about 2.5 volts there. And you can see right now we're zoomed in too far. We need to slow this down a little bit so that we can see what the actual waveform looks like. So that's pretty simple on this unit. It's not as easy as it would be if it had dials, but you get used to it. And slow down the signal a bit so we can see what's happening. It's getting closer. Here we go. I'll go a little bit faster than that. So it's showing three short pulses, three long pulses, and then three short pulses. So this one is loaded up with a little SOS skit. Now there is some over and under shoot on those. That's partially because I'm using such long leads to go from the UNO to the little breadboard here to the oscilloscope. So that's a bit expected. As well, the signal won't be perfect. But you can definitely see it's working there and We can freeze it. So now you can really easily see the waveforms here. So you can see each of these divisions is 0.5 seconds and each of these is about a third of a half of a second and each of these is about two thirds of a half of a second. Now I seem to have messed up the code here a little bit because this this pause right here is much shorter than the pause at the other end so I'll have to fix that. It should be a long pause before and after the long set of pulses. But it's nice to be able to actually visualize and see what's happening with the LED rather than just seeing it turn on and off. With the oscilloscope you can actually see what it's receiving. Now it seems I have to keep the oscilloscope here at a 
odd angle just so that these divisions show up on the screen. They are very hard to see when you're looking directly at it, but if you look at it from an angle, it really does pop. So that's interesting. Perhaps a downside of this particular LCD. Everything's hooked up. Let's power it on and see. So here we have another waveform. This one you can see is one, two division, so this is only two volts, even though it's the same LED with the same resistor going on. So in the middle here you can see there's some frantic stuff going on. So the downside is with this particular oscilloscope you can't actually change the zoom or anything once you've captured it, unfortunately. It has to redraw the screen in order to actually see a change. In this case, we want it to speed up a, quite a bit. That's what we're going to be looking at. Is this little signal there that just zoomed by. We caught a little bit of that. And I believe you can actually change the horizontal position here. You can see the little pattern it's created here. We're at 50 milliseconds. And it looks like it's turning on for 50 milliseconds. Maybe a little bit more. So it's turning on for 50 milliseconds, turning off for 50-ish milliseconds, turning on for 50, turning off for 50. Which is interesting because in the actual code this is set to one millisecond on and one millisecond off so there's quite a bit of overhead by the looks of it so yes that's it's an interesting little pulse because when you look at the LED here anytime now <laughs> It just looks like it turned on for that whole period, but really. it's just turning on and off really quickly there. So it's part of the reason it also appears to go to about half brightness there. You can stop on one of these big signal ones. Same thing, 50 milliseconds, so you got 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. So this is taking 250 milliseconds, which is actually what it's programmed for. So that one's working perfectly. And it's jumping up 2 volts just like before. Again, I'm not exactly sure why it's only putting out two volts when the other one was putting out 2.34-ish. And this one you can actually see there's a little tiny bit of undershoot here and a little tiny bit of overshoot there. That could just be the capacitance of the wires messing with it. see if we can get one of the bigger blips. This is the first signal from the sketch that's on there. This one's taking 10 divisions, so 500 milliseconds. And its little dips are about exactly the same, so I guess that's to be expected here. Now let's see what we can do with the component testers frequency generator. In order to see what's going on here, I'm going to hook the oscilloscope up to the probes of the multimeter. What I'm going to do here is just attach this. So let's come to 10 hertz. There we go. Looks like we need to slow this scope down a little bit. I do really wish that this had knobs instead of buttons because this would go much faster that way. It takes forever to get from one side of the waveform to the other. Okay, so I don't know if this is a thing with the multimeter or with the oscilloscope, but the multimeter here is only showing 0, 03 kilohertz. Unfortunately, it doesn't just display hertz, which would be much nicer. So at 20 milliseconds, it looks like it's taking about three divisions approximately. So that's 60 milliseconds. So it's 60 on, 60 off. 
So let's try one of the other frequencies. Let's go to 50 hertz and see what Similar. it does. Now it's only taking up half a division at 20 milliseconds. So if you hold the OK button while it's selected on the time base there, it actually brings up the little meter and everything. Okay, well this is very handy now. This is actually what I was looking for earlier. You can see the multimeter is not very accurate at all when it comes to frequency because the frequency generator says it's generating 100 Hertz, the oscilloscope says it's generating 100 Hertz, and the multimeter says it's generating it's generating 130 Hertz so this particular multimeters frequency function is not very good let's change the wave again 200 so there we go again 250 Hertz this one's actually getting a bit closer it says 280 this gives you the duty cycle as well so that's very very handy the weird thing is the duty cycle changes periodically on this. The other thing this seems to do is it's making it a lot easier to see the divisions and the screen seems to be refreshing faster now that that graph and information is turned on. So that's good to know. And I do like that it's telling you what the maximum voltage that it's hitting is and the minimum voltage. So it's not actually dropping below zero volts. That was just an error with the positioning there. So let's go up to the next highest. The multimeter saying 470 hertz. The oscilloscope saying about 440. The frequency generator saying 440. So that's matching up quite respectably there. Next setting. The frequency counter of the multimeter can't see a difference between these two, but the oscilloscope certainly does. Go to the next one. Again, no difference here at the multimeter. That's disappointing. We go a thousand hertz. Now it's one kilohertz and it's saying it's 1.03. So this is getting more accurate now that we're getting into the higher ranges. Duty cycles at 60%, fluctuating quite a bit there. Let's make these a little bit easier to uh, see there. Make them bigger. Ooh, that one's interesting. When you switch between those two, there's some uh, definitely some stuff happening. Now this is pretty much matching up. Let's go to the next, which is 5,000. And yes, the multimeter, now that we're in the kilohertz range, is okay. It's not great, but it's within a margin of error. We got 5 kilohertz here and 5,000 hertz there, which is 5 kilohertz. There's an interesting little pattern that's occasionally going by on the screen. Zoom. Zoom. I don't know why that is. I assume it's just some sort of weird synchronization with the refresh rate of the screen. We'll zoom in again. We're at 50 microseconds. We're going up to 10 kilohertz. And we can see the actual waveform when we pause it. So that's pretty cool. So this is extremely handy now. Now that I know how to turn the data on, that'll be very handy. And you can see 25, 10, 
10 kilohertz is the maximum for the multimeter. Once we go up to 25, it just says overload. And the 25 on here is saying it's, it's fluctuating 25, 26. Now the oscilloscope here said it could go up to 200,000. So we can definitely try to go up as high as we can. I think the highest is 250 on here. And that should be slightly out of range, but we'll find out. Let's go up to 100 kilohertz. Now the unfortunate thing is this is as low as the time base goes, so you can't zoom in any further. That's as good as it's going to get. You can switch the ranges over here, but that will just make it either way too big, way too many volts per division, or it's going to do other weird things. And 250, let's see what happens. It does seem able to see it. And if we zoom out, it's just barely able to recognize that. It's definitely just past the capabilities of the oscilloscope there. And you won't get any meaningful data from it, I don't believe. Well, I guess if you hold it, it seems to uh, grab the information there. Yeah, from what I can see, this oscilloscope seems to be accurate enough for what I need it for. It was a fun kit to put together. And I have lots of stuff to play with and try and figure out how exactly it works. I wish there was a power switch on it so you didn't just have to unplug the battery. Thank you for watching this episode of Tinkering with Terrius. If you liked this episode, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. If you want to share the video, please feel free. If you have any questions or comments about the video, please leave them in the section below. Otherwise, you can email them to me or tweet them to me. If you enjoy my videos, then please subscribe to my channel. Every subscriber helps. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.